Okay, uh, well, I'm going to make the argument that uh, there still is a role for radiation therapy in the adjuvant treatment of gastric cancer uh, as long as you select the appropriate patient. So the good news is that adjuvant therapy in gastric cancer does work, but it really modestly improves outcome. Uh, we increase overall survival by about 10 to 15 percent at five years, and we see similar survival benefits across a number of trials. Uh, the dominant approach uh, in the U.S. and Europe is preoperative uh, chemotherapy without radiation for patients with D1 uh, and D2 resection. Uh, the ECF regimen has now been replaced by FLOT, uh, which has uh, achieved uh, superior survival. However, postoperative chemotherapy after D2 resection is now validated in four trials treating nearly 3,500 patients. And the adjuvant options uh, after D2 gastrectomy without radiation include S1 uh, for a year, capecitabine oxaliplatin for six months, and then recent Asian studies that support combination chemotherapy in either node positive or stage three disease, S1 docetaxel or S1 uh, oxaliplatin. So what about postoperative radiation? Uh, well, actually, the, one of the earliest adjuvant trials uh, that showed a benefit for chemotherapy and radiation came from the United States, but arguably uh, a benefit in patients with less than a D1 or D2 resection, giving postoperative 5-FU and leucovorin with uh, radiotherapy. So what is the role of postoperative radiation? I think this was addressed best um, in the U.S. Intergroup Trial 116 in which uh, patients with resected gastric cancer were uh, uh, assigned uh, no further therapy or postoperative 5-FU uh, leucovorin and radiation. And this was a positive trial, about a 10 percent improvement in long-term survival. Uh, this has held up um, after uh, many updates uh, now over many years and became uh, a standard of care uh, when this study was published. However, the biggest impact of uh, the treatment is reducing local recurrence. Uh, a rather high 29 percent local recurrence rate was reduced to 19 percent with 5-FU and radiation. If you look at the local recurrence rates in the Asian studies, it hovers less than 5 to 10 percent. So 5-FU uh, radiation did reduce local recurrence in this uh, study. However, diffuse cancers did not benefit, and they accounted for about 40 percent of patients, and uh, HER2 patients, a small subset, uh, did not seem to benefit. But what we learned from this study is that surgery is important. Uh, only 10 percent of patients on this trial had a D2 resection, and 54 percent had less than a D1 resection. So I continue to make the argument that 5-FU and radiation is a standard of care for gastric cancer in patients with less than a D1 resection. But the other patients that may potentially benefit from radiotherapy are positive margin patients. Probably the best data that we have from a controlled study is actually comes from an esophageal cancer study, intergroup trial 113, because this study actually looked at the outcome for patients. Uh, that uh, had positive uh, margins after surgical resection. Uh, this was a preoperative pre chemotherapy trial in adenocarcinoma and squamous cancer, 467 patients, and they reported outcome long-term in 43 patients that underwent R1 resection. Nine of these patients, 21 percent, did not recur, and all of them received postoperative chemotherapy and radiation. So uh, these data supply support that chemotherapy and radiation may salvage uh, a patient with an R1 resection with a positive margin. So does adding radiation to perioperative chemotherapy improve outcome? I think this was best addressed by the uh, CRITICS trial in which uh, perioperative chemotherapy was evaluated with or without the addition of radiation postoperatively, and to cut to the chase, there was no survival benefit in these patients. Um, uh, on this trial, surgical quality was good. Uh, about 50 percent had D2 resection and 50 percent had D1 resection. So what if everybody gets a D2 resection? Does postoperative radiation add a benefit? And this was addressed in the uh, Korean artist trial in which uh, patients after D2 resection were randomized to six months of capecitabine cisplatin with or without radiation. And this was also a negative trial uh, after D2 resection, no benefit for postoperative radiation. Uh, 
may be a signal in intestinal versus diffuse uh, patients, and may be a lesser signal in node positive patients, about a 4% improvement. So what is the role of radiation in gastric cancer surgery? I think the extent of surgery dictates the need for radiation. Post-operative radiation with 5-FU leucovorin, I think, is a standard of care in patients that undergo less than a D1 resection, and an argument can be made that patients with a positive margin after surgery should undergo radiation. Uh, in patients uh, who undergo perioperative or postoperative chemotherapy with a D1 or D2 resection, uh, radiation does not add a benefit. Uh, maybe a signal of postoperative radiation improving outcome after D2 in the node uh, positive or intestinal patients. Uh, and um, this was actually then addressed in ARTIS-2. I feel like I'm presenting all the studies that are arguing against my argument, but you have to present the data. So the ARTIS-2 trial actually asked this question, uh, now looking, focusing only on node positive patients. This was presented at the ASCO meeting a month ago. Um, the other important question of ARTIS-2 was uh, comparing the standard of S1 for a year versus S1 oxaloplatin for six months, and then S1 oxaloplatin with radiation. And again, this was limited to node positive patients. Uh, I think one of the criticisms of this is uh, their previous study showed no benefit for diffuse cancers for radiation, but they included diffuse cancers. So this is the schema of the ARTIS trial, looking at uh, six months versus a year of chemotherapy uh, with or without radiation. Uh, the trial did not accrue all the planned patients, only 538 out of 900 patients. Uh, and most of the patients were stage three, 70 percent, and most were T3 and T4. And only about 30 percent of the patients on the trial were uh, intestinal tumors. So this looks at the uh, six months versus a year question. So uh, I think this creates a new standard of care in Asia for node positive gastric cancer that S1 oxaloplatin for six months is superior to S1 alone. But if we look at the radiation question on the right, uh, adding radiation uh, after D2 resection, even in node positive patients, did not improve uh, survival uh, in this uh, study. And here we just see subset benefits, uh, and I think uh, in the intestinal uh, patients, we do not see a benefit. If we look at the right-hand side of the forest plot, uh, the hazard ratio for intestinal tumors is one, whether or not they got radiation. These are the ongoing randomized trials, and I think that now the focus is looking at preoperative radiation, uh, both in esophageal and gastric cancer. And the one trial that's treating both gastric and uh, G-junction and esophageal cancers is Top Gear, which is looking at perioperative chemotherapy with or without preoperative radiation. And then uh, the uh, other European trials, Ezepec and Neoegis, are essentially comparing the FLOT approach versus CROSS. And then the CRITICS-2 trial is looking at the CROSS-approach chemoradiation versus a FLOT regimen versus sandwiching FLOT followed by chemoradiation. So is there a role for adjuvant radiation in gastric cancer? Yes, but I think it's a circumscribed role. Adjuvant radiation improves overall survival in patients undergoing less than a D1 resection with reduction in local recurrence and arguably a role for improving survival in positive margin patients. Uh, the artist uh, trial, the initial artist trial did suggest a benefit for uh, node positive intestinal tumors, but artist 2 could not validate a benefit for um, uh, node positive or intestinal tumors, uh, and uh, I rest my case.